What is that? If you've been hanging around our little neck of the internet lately, you know we just bought a trimaran. Hopefully everything looks the same when we get home. Last time, Kirk trailered the boat 1,500 miles from Florida up to our property in northern Michigan. <laughs> we have a boat! Welcome aboard. Why, thank you. <sighs> We've been waiting a lot of years for this picture right here. That's our boat. <laughs> This is our land. Yes. That's our house. This is our garage. We've spent so many hours, days, weeks, months in a boatyard and... Nothing like laying on gravel. It kind of sucks. In a nasty environment. When we're in the boatyard, it's like, go, go, go. Gotta get everything done and get out of here as fast as possible because the longer we stay here, the more I feel like I want to die. <laughs> we're like, how cool would it be to just work on our boat right in our yard? Yeah. And now we have our own shower. We've got our own place to hang out. And we don't have to pay for the we don't boat. Have to pay for the boat in storage. Sitting somewhere else, not being used. Our days in boatyards are hopefully done for a long time. So the boat's on land right now, which is cool for when we want to work on it, but boats are supposed to be in the water. So we have to build our own mooring. This is our new anchor. Or maybe this one. We don't know yet. So I'm this anchor has 3,500 pounds of holding capacity. This one has 2,500 pounds of holding capacity. According to the ABYC, the smaller anchor would be fine for our boat size and local wind speeds. But for extra peace of mind, we wanted to size up. These screw into the ground, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So this anchor is going to screw all the way down into the seabed so that only this eye is remaining. How exactly are we gonna get this into the seabed? Hold this one and I'll show you. Perfect. More metal. <laughs> we have a Dive Blue Nemo electric dive compressor, which is gonna allow me to go down to the bottom of the, the lake bed and start to screw this in. Literally, I'm just gonna start by hand. Eventually, I'm gonna get to the point where there's enough friction that I need more leverage. And that's where this big long pipe comes in. <laughs> We've enlisted the help of Dad's mobile mooring company today. My father's trucked his boat up to our place so that we can uh, do a little family outing on the lake in his boat since our boat is not in the water yet. But today it's going to be the utility boat. So that we can install those guys. All right, I'm going to bring this piece of wood. We don't know exactly what we're going to need so we're just bringing all sorts of crazy stuff. We got a sledgehammer, we got a big old piece of pipe to get some leverage. We got another piece of pipe for leverage and another one and this this one there you know we'll see don't know what we need we got two fenders and we're going to use one of these as a temporary mooring ball just to uh, mark the anchor and then once we actually put our boat on the ball we plan on getting a real mooring ball the area that we're gonna be putting our mooring used to have a very large industrial dock. There was a metal fabrication plant and iron ore was shipped in from the uh, Great Northern Great Lakes, from yeah. Lake Superior. So there's this huge industrial dock that basically just rotted away and the city sort of just pushed it into the water. And so- I dove on this last year to have a look at the seabed, the, the lake bed, to see what we were working with and there's a lot of debris. All over there's huge like beams and giant pillars and so none of the traditional anchors, a mushroom anchor, a pyramid anchor, even just like a giant barrel filled of concrete. Which is what some people do. We've actually talked to some people and in the winter they will roll a barrel out, well, on the ice, drive it out and uh, cut a hole and then drop it through. That's a possibility, but if you remember that concrete is like 30% water, when you put 30% of water into water, you lose 30% of the weight. And at that point, you're just hoping that brute weight force yeah. is going to hold your boat to where it is. Um, we didn't really like that idea. And with all of the other traditional anchors, even you know putting together like triangulating three big Danforth anchors or something, all of those could very easily get fouled if there was any amount of movement in any the anchors debris, right? and, or any of the debris. Yeah. Okay. 
drop the anchor, and then we'll fall back to where we're hoping to be, and then we'll drop a stern anchor, and then we'll pull ourselves forward again. By using these anchors, these helical piles, um, these are actually from a company called Helix Moorings, we only need a space that's 10 inches around to get this thing all the way into the ground. To illustrate the point, if all of this is dirt, you have to pull this like through the dirt and then this all has to come up out of the dirt for this thing to move like. We think we have our answer. We think we have our answer. <laughs> yeah, that's starting to get. What is that? Can you hit the bottom? Yeah, I'm touching the bottom so right that's there. what, seven feet maybe? That's no, six. six it's and up and to half. my elbow. There it is. Right there. Okay. These hold the best in like a, a really clay. solid sandy clay bottom, which is what we think our lake bed is like. All right, hopefully that's holding. So I think, I think my plan is um, we're about where we want to be. So the wind is coming a little bit from a slightly different direction than it normally does. Normally the wind's coming more from here and today it's kind of coming from here. So we've got ourselves a little bit close to this boat which should be falling back on its mooring. We've got another mooring ball over there and that one's probably going straight up. So if we drop our mooring here, we're gonna fall back towards that one. So it's okay to be closer to this boat. My logic right? I think my logic is right. <laughs> um, we're in about six and a half feet of water right now. I'm gonna dive in and kind of take a look, make sure we've got some nice clean sandy ground because I can't see the bottom today. There's just a little too much wind chop. Um, and then when I think we've got it, I'm gonna have you, Lauren, or my dad, pass in the big helix mooring and I'm gonna start to screw it in. And hope it, hope it starts going down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't almost fall off the back of the boat, but definitely fell on my butt. <laughs> what do you got? Oh. Seven and a half? Yeah, let's do it here. Sweet. I like this. Y'all ready? Yeah. If we feel like we don't have enough holding power from this giant one, what we would do is back that big one up with a secondary one a few feet away, linked together with some chain and shackles in the direction of the predominant wind um, angle coming down the lake. That will just prevent any movement in this, in this eye up here, backed up by another 25 pounds of holding strength. 2,500. 2,500, what did I say, 25 pounds? <laughs> We'll get into the sizing of all of the rest of the gear because we have um, two sections yeah, this is of chain, just one part of it, a right? whole bunch of shackles to put all of this together, the mooring pennant, the buoy. This is gonna be a really fun project, trying to get this thing in the water using our little dive compressor. It's, it's gonna be sweet. All right, so that's been working well so far, but now it's time to bring in the big guns. Well, you're getting too deep, right? We're getting too deep, yeah. And this, and also, it's too much force. I'm trying to hold my breath, push up on the bar that I have through the eye of the anchor to anchor me down and then crank on the piece. Yeah, a weight belt would be probably A weight good. belt would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna bust out the Nemo. So we've, we've used this once before to clean the bottom of our boat when we were in the Keys. But this is the reason we got this, was to be able to put in a mooring. We, we've had this for what, a year now? Yeah. At least, and we knew 
at that time that we were gonna get a boat, we were gonna bring it up here and we were gonna install the mooring and that's why we wanted this. It's just taken that long for this to actually happen. Um, big surprise. Big surprise. So this is an electric dive compressor. Mm, there we go. Uses lithium batteries and provides a tiny bit of compression on the air when you're breathing only. And this floats around in a little bag behind me. Okay, get our dive flag. There you go, little buddy. We can go down to 10 foot of depth. And I don't remember how long this battery pack lasts. It all depends on how much exertion you're doing. And so I think while I'm doing this, I'm gonna be breathing pretty hard and it's not gonna last all that long. But I think this will get us most of the way there. All right, Dad, I'll trade you back those goggles. All right. You're still standing on the post? I'm right on it, yep. So this morning we put in the big five and a half foot, inch and a quarter, 3,500 pound, holding strength, 10 inch disc, helix mooring. Uh, it went in a little bit too easy. Um, I hit a really, really hard patch and I actually bent the giant lever arm and it got really, really stiff for a little while. And then all of a sudden I broke through. I guess there was like a big rock that I was pushing out of the way. I broke through and it just went in like butter. So, Round, Round two. two. <laughs> Jinx. We have a second helix mooring. The idea was that this smaller one was gonna potentially be temporary if I couldn't get the big one in. Now actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it as like a backup to the primary. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see if things have solidified. Um, I mean, I think always when you screw in a, a big thing underwater, you've disturbed all of the seafloor. It takes a little while for everything to kind of get recompacted around it. Um, but I was able to actually kind of jiggle the top of the mooring when it was all the way down and in, in, in the hole, so. It feels a little chillier now. Yeah, it just made me a little nervous. And right now, hopefully what we're doing is just insurance. We decided to position the secondary anchor about eight feet away from the main. Since the secondary was four feet long, after doubling it, we'd know how much chain we need to link them together. bit of an ominous sign. Oh. It might not be as sandy as I thought. It might be more mucky or silty. Yeah. And if it's not sandy, then these are not going to hold as well as right. I thought they were. Okay. But we'll see. So we just put in the second mooring. It was much, much siltier than the first. It went down really easy. Yeah, I hope the bottom's solid enough. We're, we're fighting two things. We need to have enough depth so that we can motor up to our mooring and not have to worry too much about our centerboard and daggerboard as it is right now. We're gonna have to pull up our, our centerboard and our rudder a little bit to get on and off our mooring ball, which sort of sucks. But the farther out we go, it drops off quite quickly and that's where all the debris really starts. And around all of the debris, it's very, very silty. And so we're right on the edge. We put the bigger mooring in much firmer sand and then we put the other one eight feet forward. That one went in way too easy. I was almost spinning it like by hand. But the good news is, is that when we put the big one in earlier today, I could kind of jiggle it around. But when we came back six hours later, feeling really solid. So the, the seabed's definitely settling around it, which will give us a bit more holding.
This is all the hardware to build our mooring. What's that, Tata? That's some seizing wire. So this is definitely not gonna look like a professional job. I'm hoping it will somewhat act like a professional job. <laughs> we'll see. Now.